is basically like the bumblebee version of a thousand ways to die. This stuff is insane and definitely a little gross, so viewer beware. Personally, I love the idea of sliding into my grave like Indiana Jones, but most of these are a little too wild for me. From a spontaneous combustion to horrendous means of torment, today we count down our list of top 10 unusual ways that ancient rulers died. I'm your host, Rachel Fisher, and let's get started. Number 10, King Henry the First. We've all been there. Mostly on holidays where the food was just so good, we couldn't stop eating, we got so full, we wish we could die. I personally could talk about food for hours. I have a 10 minute limit with my boyfriend because uh, otherwise it just gets out of hand. True story. What is also a true story is that King Henry the first died from eating too much of his favorite thing. Henry loved a medieval delicacy called lamprey pie, a jawless giant leech like fish that was like sweetened with syrup. It was really gross and weird, but he loved it. He died at Lyons La Forêt near Rouen, Normandy in December 11th. 35 CE. He was supposed to go hunting, but had eaten so much lamprey pie that he fell sick with food poisoning. His chronicler, Henry of Huntington, said that he died due to a surfeit of lamprey. He wanted to have his body taken to Reading, which was a monastery he founded with 200 monks. They had to wrap his body in cowhide, cover it in herbs, scented oil, and salt, and remove his organs in order to preserve him for the journey. The man who removed his brain reportedly died due to a strong, pervasive stench. So not only did the king die, he took someone else down with him. Number nine, King Alexander. And no, this is not about Alexander the Great, different guy. Though he did die mysteriously as well. Maybe we'll cover that in part two if it so pleases you, let us know in the comments. I'm actually talking about Alexander who was king of Greece for a while in the 20th century. He ruled for all of three years until he died, tragically, after being bit by a monkey. Yep. That's true, yes, a monkey. Not a tiger, not a lion, a crocodile, or a hippo, a monkey. Sadly, this is his legacy. This is all people remember of him. <laughs> he took up the throne after World War I after his father abdicated because he was seen as pro-German. After the Allies won, a political platform called Great Greece began. Their aim was to capture the Ottoman Empire and seize all of their land. They invaded Turkey, but Alexander was fated for another destiny. He was visiting the Royal Gardens on September 30th, 1920, and was strolling along with his dog, they came across a Barbary macaque monkey and his dog attacked. The king rushed forward to separate them, but the monkey had friends. Another monkey rushed forward to protect his buddy and bit the king in the leg, which later became severely infected. Doctors acted too late to remove the leg, and so he died three weeks later from sepsis. He was only 27, and he was remembered because he died from being bit by a monkey. Number eight, Phalaris. What goes around comes around. Despite the actual death being very dramatic, it does have a kind of poetic justice to it. Polaris was referred to as the tyrant of Agrigas Sicily. This guy made cruelty look like an art form. He was known for punishing his victims by putting them into a bronze bowl that he would heat with fire beneath. Yes, I'm talking about the brazen bull, a hollowed out bronze bull that would transform the cries of its prisoner into the bellows of a bull as it slowly roasted to death. Cruel entertainment. The first person to be punished was allegedly the designer of the contraption himself. He gained power after taking on the responsibility of building a temple of Zeus. He armed his workers and seized power, but they would soon all regret it. A man named Telemachus eventually overthrew this horrific ruler, and you guessed it, he was thrown into the very bull he used to unalive countless people. Ouch. Number seven, King Richard the Lionheart. Look, we all know I'm on the Richard the Lionheart train because I just finished reading about the Third Crusade. Madness, utter madness, Richard was born for battle. Saladin had never faced nor encountered any warrior like him. They were so equally matched. Saladin was also really awesome. I should do a video about him. Saladin would watch him fight and was in such awe he sent him two of his best horses in the middle of a battle because such a man should not be without his horse. He would literally like, like, plow through his enemies like a bulldozer, at times falling ill due to the stench of battle but never succumbing to it. He had so many encounters with death that he seemed to be like invincible, immortal even. Which is why his death is so strange to me and so anticlimactic. He was walking towards a battlement un- armored and a vengeful boy took advantage and shot him in the arm with an arrow. Richard jumped on his horse and went to a doctor, but the doctor was terrible at his job, basically butchered his arm and caused him to get gangrene, therefore a death sentence. He had the bowman brought to him and asked him why he was his downfall, and this is where it kind of gets really crazy. The boy replied that Richard had slain his father and brother and that he would accept any punishment he was given. 
crazy. Richard was so in awe of the guy that he ordered instead that the boy not be harmed and instead be given enough money to live out the rest of his days happily. Sadly though, after Richard died people were so bereft that his wishes were ignored and the bowman was punished and killed. So very very sad but what an anticlimactic death for Richard the Lionheart but also what a proud thing to do. Number 6 Caracalla. I'm going to try and avoid bathroom humor as much as I can. But feel free to go wild in the comments. Have you ever been in the bathroom doing your business and suddenly your mind starts going and you're like someone could easily take me out right now, you know? I mean it's not like you can just stop what you're doing, you know, before hands reach out and grab you beneath the stall and you're like ah, you know, like what a way to go, right? Exactly. Which is kind of why it's bad form to assassinate someone in that vulnerable space. Poor Roman Emperor Caracalla. I mean, not really, though he gave Roman citizenship to free inhabitants, he, he is considered as one of the most bloodthirsty tyrants in Rome, so not a great guy. His reign is one of the main reasons the empire fell. He made a lot of people angry, let's just say that. In 217, the emperor was preparing for a major campaign against the Parthian Empire. He was visiting a temple nearby when he was stabbed by a Roman soldier who was allegedly angry with him for not promoting him. While this was happening, he was busy relieving himself on the side of the road and he was just dead. Ugh. Bad form. But also, you know, not a good guy. Number 5, Queen Caroline of Ansbach. I'm not gonna lie, this is not for anyone with a weak stomach so be careful. This is not a good way to go. One of history's goriest deaths to be sure. Queen Caroline was the consort of George II. She was described as extremely clever, intelligent, strong in character. However, later in life she became overwhelmed with extreme bouts of gout. They became so bad that she had to be wheeled around the castle in an ornate chair. The cause was a strangulated hernia which developed after the birth of her youngest. Eventually the pain became so bad that she couldn't leave her bed. Her womb had ruptured and she was bleeding internally and then, I'm so sorry, her bowels exploded. Exploded. On November 20th, 1737, Caroline passed away, leaving behind this epigram. Here lies, wrapped in 40,000 towels, the only proof that Caroline had bowels. Ugh, not a great legacy. Sorry, girl. Number four, a deadly throne. Metaphorically, a throne can be deadly. Anyone who takes up that much power immediately has dozens of targets on their back. But imagine if it was the throne itself that killed you, literally. Bella I of Hungary did everything he could to get onto the throne. His father, Prince Vazul, had to rebel against his own father to get the throne, though instead he was captured and blinded. So, Bella and his siblings fled until his eldest brother successfully seized the crown. As per tradition, in Hungary, the crown was supposed to be passed from brother to brother, but instead, Bella's brother's son was named heir. So Bella organized an army in Poland, marched on Hungary, killed his brother on the throne, and took up his reign. He actually accomplished much in his reign, including crushing a pagan rebellion and asserting Hungarian independence. But then, in 1063, as Bella was walking up to his throne in front of a bunch of officials and sat down, the whole throne collapsed. The accident left him severely injured and he died from his injuries later on. His throne literally killed him. Number 3, Valyrian. The words molten gold and game of thrones evokes a specific image for those who have seen the show, but did you know that they may have been inspired by the real life death of Roman Emperor Valyrian? Many rumors as to how Emperor Valyrian actually met his fate kind of range, but either way, it wasn't a good end. According to Lactantius, Persian King Shapur I captured Valyrian in battle and tormented him without mercy. He used him as a footstool, mocked him, flayed him with straw, but the most vicious was the rumor that he met his end by having molten gold poured down his throat. Another is that he was just kept in imprisonment until he eventually faded away into nothingness. His own son didn't even try to rescue his father after he was captured due to humiliation, but also because he was trying to hold back a rebellion. What officially happened to the emperor we may never know, but whatever it was, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Number two, Georgi Doza. This is definitely the most brutal on the list, so warnings ahead. This dude was literally torn to shreds by people. I wish that was a metaphor, but it's not. Georgi Doza was a Transylvanian nobleman who led a Hungarian peasant rebellion against their lords. He went down in history as both a criminal and a Christian martyr. He was appointed by Pope Leo X to lead a crusade against the Ottoman with an army of 40,000 volunteers, mostly peasants. The nobles failed to supply the crusaders with what they needed and soon the peasants began to revolt against the nobles. 
rebels. Doza agreed with their grievances and organized a massive rebellion that led to all out war against the nobles. Noble manors were ransacked, nobles were tormented and unalived, but soon the aristocracy began crushing back the rebellion, and 70,000 rebels were tormented to death. But Georgi got it the worst. He was first forced to sit in a hot chair with a hot crown fixed upon his head, and then nine of his followers who were starved before this were forced to, um, well, let's just say, make a meal out of him. Yeah, not good, not good, we don't like that. Number one, William the Conqueror. Just recently, I went to see one of my favorite comedians, Eddie Izzard, and through her show, I learned that William the Conqueror exploded. <laughs> he exploded! I couldn't believe it, so I had to look it up, and yup, it's true, folks. We have not one, but two people on this list that exploded internally. William ate as much as he conquered. Not only was he a glutton for land, he was also for the finer things in life, the finest foods, and the spoils of war. As a result, the Duke of Normandy grew in impressive size. In 1087, while riding his horse, it reared unexpectedly, and due to his size, he was unable to balance, and the saddle pushed so hard into his abdomen that his intestines were punctured. Doctors didn't have the means to perform surgery due to his size and their tech, so eventually the king succumbed to his injuries, dying six weeks later. Six weeks? That's a long time. But it doesn't end there. Oh no! He was so disliked that his corpse was abandoned until a wandering knight took on the deed. By the time his body finally arrived in Cannes to be buried, it had been weeks. The bacteria festered in his intestines, filling his body with putrid gas, and as the gravediggers were lowering him into his grave, the hole was too small to fit his now inflamed massive corpse, so they tried to squeeze him in by like jumping and pressing, and in typical Monty Python fashion, he burst and exploded all over the crowd. So no, he didn't die by explosion, but kind of internally, and then again. So. It counts, but what a weird way to go, and what an even weirder way to be buried. And that was our somewhat darker Bumblebee list of the top 10 unusual ways that ancient rulers died. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, follow, and subscribe to stay a part of the hive. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher, and I'm gonna go thank every doctor I know for the most amazing technology that they have now, because I don't have to worry about any of this. Until next time, folks, stay sweet bees.